Welcome to Bizarre Bazaar, and today we're watching a video of a New York cop who looks like he's been around the block a little bit. Things that would terrify me and you, he sees on a daily basis. But in this video, he is asked to explain the worst thing he has ever witnessed. And it scarred me for life. When I'm near the places that he talks about, this video always comes flashing back. I was only a young teen when I watched this for the first time, and maybe that's why we now write to serial killers on this channel. Here's the video. How are you doing tonight? Pretty good, fucking tired as hell. <laughs> you wanna work now? Yeah. Are you a cop or are you just working at a... Yeah, I'm in the rescue squad next door to the prison. Oh, really? I did my other job today all day. Fucking heat. What do you do? Construction. Two jobs? Yeah. That's it. Everybody needs money, you know what I mean? Trying to save for a house. Really? It sucks. Well, you do what you gotta do, you know? The rescue squad is your regular uh, PD or? Uh... Yeah, you gotta be a regular cop first. Uh huh. Have at least five years on the job and then you try out for the rescue squad. It's all that SWAT shit, rescue stuff, you know. Yeah. Jumping out of helicopters, climbing bridges. Really? Scuba, scuba diving, you know. Really? So it's fucking 10 times better than being a regular cop. I'm sure you could tell some stories. I oh, forget. Anything recently? I was busy as fuck last night. Really? What'd you do? Fucking shootings and killings and fucking around everything. around here. Um, every UV. Fucking destroyed this guy, man. They made Swiss cheese out of him. Drug thing? We don't know yet. Probably, you know, when you figure it out. This guy was riding on one of those mountain bikes. Yeah. They tried to rob him and they fucking started shooting at him. You know, after 14 times, I think the guy's dead. Yeah, I'd say so. Give him a break already. I mean, I've seen every conceivable way a person could die. I've seen. Really? Numerous times. What was the most, like, upsetting thing you ever saw? When a guy gets hit by a train, not run over by a train, when he gets stuck in between the platform and the train. You know when a guy's standing on the edge of the platform? Yeah. Okay, somebody pushes him into the train as the train's coming in. You fall in between, the, you ever see a little space? Yeah. You fall in there. Now what happens is when the train is coming down, it spins you around. And what happens is, from your waist down, it spins you around. You know, it actually like folds you around. And just twists you up. Like a, like a plastic bag. Right. You're standing there, all of a sudden what the thing does is, it spins you around like this, okay? And you're stuck like this. All twisted up. All twisted up. Oh, now what happens is, when I push that train off your body, the bottom part of your legs spin back this way, and all your oh. guts fall down and you die in less than a minute, you're dead. So what happens is, when that train holds your body together this way, you're, twisting you, you're alive. Yeah. Your heart's beating, your brain's okay, you're alive. I yeah. can talk to you like this. Right. And I have to tell you, I gotta... you're gonna die. Okay, that's the sad part, because I got a lot of young people that it happens to. You have to tell them. You gotta tell them, because you're gonna die. How the hell do you We know you're gonna die, that's it, there's nothing. I could have a hospital right there, expert doctors right there, you're gonna die, because as soon as your body untwists, or your guts and everything, because they've been ripped apart when that train sucked you. How do you feel? So you got to explain to them, you know, look, you know, the train came down, you know, it spun you around. You feel like you're okay because you're numb from the waist down. You don't feel, it. most of the time, they don't feel their legs. But then we have to explain to them that, you know, your balls are facing the wrong way. This is what's going to happen. So what happens is once we take the airbags and push the train off you and try to get you out of there, you're going to die in less than two minutes. So you want to speak to your wife, you want a priest, you want this, you want that. Really? Usually what we do is we know when we get a job like that, we automatically call the priest. We try to find out who, who the guy is, we get his family down there, we explain to them. Wow. That must One day we left, uh, we had a priest come, the guy's wife, and we cleared the whole fucking train station out. And left his wife down there with the priest. And he was, he Just was so alive, she could hug like... him and kiss him and say whatever she wanted to say to him before we fucking did it. You knew he was good, he was... That's it, you're dead. It's an injury that there's no way they can fix it. Picture right from underneath your rib cage, down, everything just spins around and gets ripped apart. Jeez, it's fucking horrible. Now that's sad because you're talking to the person, you know? And then of course when you get a young girl well, when or... You, when you, if you get into a situation where, I mean, the, the person's already hurt or dead or, you know, but... But there you're going then, the guy's screaming at you, come on, get me the fuck out of here. And he's trying to get himself out, you know, he's pushing himself. Meanwhile, he has no idea how bad his injuries are, you know? 
We got some guys with their heads cut off, blown up, burnt, shot, stabbed, poisoned, hanged, run over by trains, cars, blown up. I mean, fucking you name it, I've seen it. How do you go home to your family after seeing all this, this crap? You know, it's a job, that's it. You know, I go home and I forget and about you can, it. Can you, like, leave it? Yeah. You know? The other thing is I noticed that when I'm out with my family, uh, I'm always, like, looking around, you know, always looking for the fucking bad guy to come over and break the balls. You expect, you, you expect the worst, like? Yeah, you know, I expect somebody to try to mug us or fucking yeah. hurt. But I fucking shoot you in a minute because I don't give a fuck. This death is brutal. Could you imagine being told this? Just don't move the train. I'll stay here for the rest of time. Build a new station. I don't care. If you move this train, it's murder. Anyway, ruthless jobs these cops have in New York. So next time you get in the train, tram, subway, or whatever you call it, don't get your knickers in a twist. Don't forget, if you want to write to inmates like I do, use the service I use. It's called Jmail. It's fast and it's secure, and it means you don't have to use your home address. I'll leave a link to their services in the description below. Just go check out the website. Please like the video and subscribe if you're new. Until next time. Stay sane.